Hey everybody, I uh, had pretty good response uh, on all my videos today. Uh, thanks for watching them. Uh, it was pretty great. Um, yeah, don't forget if you're not subscribed yet, uh, subscribe helps me out. Uh, I have a lot of really great videos, uh, mostly in nature, but uh, I do like uh, poetry and uh, and also good philosophy like the art of war. And so that's what we're doing here right now. We're uh, reading through the art of war. Uh, check out some of my other videos. Uh, went through the first four books already. And uh, this is the fifth book. It's called here, Using the Power of Heaven. And so, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. I figured I'd give you guys another uh, reading tonight. And um, yeah, stay tuned for the rest in the coming days. I want to get through this book. It's been pretty insightful. It is important for the warlord to manage all his resources by maintaining personal control over them. He may delegate authority in certain respects, but is primarily responsible for his own welfare. It does not matter if there are many affairs to control or if there are few. He manages and controls his own destiny. All is controlled with ease or difficulty depending on his desire, and this will be determined by his understanding of the organization of heaven. Management of resources is done by assigning the correct tasks to his staff with the assurance that those charged are able to accomplish his, his desires. This is called delegating with intelligence and authority, and it can only be successful if the warlord knows the capabilities of his men. He must also know their limitations. A warlord manages his aides in each aspect of his administration. He does not concern himself with the men that his aides command. If the warlord depends on five generals for the completion of the tasks he orders, and those generals have ten captains reporting to them, then the many are controlled by the one through the few. He knows this and uses it to his advantage. The warlord's chiefs can control everything, leaving him free to deal with the further de development of the empire, but only if they have been chosen with care and thought to the overall goal of the enterprise. It is essential to maintain this structure, the chain of command, for without it, nothing will function harmoniously. When all is in harmony, the army can withstand natural attacks and those that appear to be supernatural. This ability is maintained through correct administration and the proper management of men. When functioning in proper order, an army can make an enemy think that attacks are not what they appear to be. This is reinforced even further if the organization has had proper training and practice. All things that exist have a multitude of variations, some subtle and some not so subtle, with only limited tones in a musical scale and red, blue, and green on the palette. Combinations of melodies and colors become infinite. The principles are the same when the warlord administers his court or applies methods to defeating an enemy. The possibilities are endless under heaven. That is why each move must be carefully measured and considered. In battle, as everywhere else, combinations of natural and supernatural forces are infinite and cannot be comprehended with ease. The methods to be used are as un unfathomable as the ideas that govern existence, and when applied with full force and authority, they cannot be stopped. When the warlord is skilled in the ways of war, his attacks are thorough, and he is relentless, and Till the goal is achieved. Heaven sees the meaning in his desires and will itself insist that he attains his goals. His timing is perfect. His reasoning is perfect. His resources are perfect. His desires are perfect. All things under heaven are in accord with his thinking because of his planning for victory. Even so, there is no guarantee he will succeed if he is only intellectually convinced of victory. He must be convinced of it to the very depths of his soul. Planning is his form of demand, and heaven, when he is acknowledged by it, will assist to the ends of the universe. The warlord will attain great fortune in war, but if he is not sincere, heaven will know that too and will not assist him. He will fail and will take down those who believed in him as well. It must be understood that deceptive actions are significant in war. Organization with will indicate if the warlord is ent entering the place of war with correct action or if he is functioning in chaos. 
The same attitude of organization will also determine the bravery or cowardice of his men in any circumstance, and their belief in will be indicated by the right action or weaknesses in battle by the same heaven that governs the warlord. When the warlord is strong, he makes the enemy move where and when he wants him to move and keeps him still when he wants him to be still. Controlling his own destiny, he influences the enemy at, at will while operating under the providence of heaven. A skilled warlord does not depend on his subordinates to wrest victory and profit. Proper planning is what rules the day. With proper organization and intelligent delegation of responsibility, he takes control of his destiny. He does not rely on subordinates to explain failure to him. He guarantees his own success by demanding it of himself. When the warlord has given his heart to preparations for victory, he is not surprised when it comes because his success appears to be divinely guided. So, uh... Hope you enjoyed that one. Uh, book six is, is coming up. It's called Fortitude and Frailty. And uh, I'll get that to that tomorrow and uh, probably uh, go out to a really cool place and read it for you guys. So stay tuned. Uh, comment uh, what you want me to probably uh, get to next on the, on these books. And, uh, you know, maybe where you uh, would like to see me read them. And uh, like and subscribe. Thanks.